Uh, good morning, Long Beach High School. I'm Leland Tennyson, and this is Dr. Robert Leaf. And today we are here on career callings. Uh, all right. So, Dr. Leaf, can you give us a just brief description about you? Sure. Um, well, I'm an associate professor in the at the University of Southern Mississippi. Uh, I work at the Gulf Coast Research Lab, which is in Ocean Springs. It's a graduate um, and research uh, laboratory for our university, and we specialize in coastal sciences, which is the study of the animals, plants, and habitats on um, mostly in Mississippi shoreline. All right. Um, can you dive more in detail about what you, like your job title? Sure, is? sure, yeah. Um, so uh, the Gulf Coast Research Lab, um, like many of the programs in Southern Mississippi, are research intensive. And um, so I'm an associate professor, and I have an expertise and training in fishery science. Uh, so I work um, very closely with um, stakeholders we call fishermen and people concerned with um, fish stocks, the fish populations and the harvest fish populations, we call those stakeholders, and then also with uh, regulatory agencies like the state of Mississippi and um, the federal government. And what we do in my laboratory is um, we work on uh, population dynamics models. So we, it's a computer intensive math and statistic intensive approaches to understanding how many fish you can uh, take out of the ecosystem or take out of a stock to have uh, plenty left over for the next year and plenty left over in 10 years from now. So it's a real strong focus on sustainability. All right. Um, so getting into the field, what like level of education would you recommend someone has? In, in um, ocean science and engineering in general, um, a bachelor's degree in some fields will be very adequate. Uh, and then others, a master and a PhD are necessary. To teach at the university, generally you need a PhD. Um, to be an active researcher, um, getting grant funding and then running your own research programs, um, really need a PhD for that. And that's about uh, you know, four years of undergraduate, two years of master's, and another four, three to four years of uh, PhD training. Right. So it's a, it's a long road post-graduate, post-high school graduation. Yeah, but uh, very important. So where did you personally go to college? I went to school uh, as an undergraduate at University of California, Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm from California originally, and then I, um, I did my master's degree in California, and then I got my uh, PhD at Virginia Tech, which okay. is um, a university in southeast Virginia. It's an uh, engineering and science uh, school. Yeah, uh, do you know any specific schools that offer, like in your opinion, great classes? So we are very fortunate in our area to have a couple of, um, more than a few great universities uh, that offer undergraduate and graduate education in uh, ocean science and the, sort of the, uh, the related engineering programs. Um, so as the interim director of our school in ocean science of engineering, we offer four programs, um, a marine biology program, these are undergraduate programs, a marine biology program, ocean engineering, uh, marine science, and hydrography. And hydrography is um, mapping of the ocean floor mm -hmm. using pretty advanced instrumentation. And um, so uh, we have a pretty heavy emphasis on the biology, the marine science, so geological science, phys physical oceanography, um, chemical oceanography and biological oceanography, these are branches of marine science, and then also pretty strong engineering focus as well. Yeah, all right. So this is kind of a two-part question. Uh, can you describe like a day at work for you personally? Oh, sure, yeah, I'd be happy to. So um, we really have three different things that we do as faculty members at a marine lab, um, like Gulf Coast Research Lab. We have a, um, a mentoring component for our graduate students, so I'll generally meet with my graduate students. Um, the way that graduate school works in, in many sciences um, is that we pay our graduate students to come to school. Um, we pay them um, uh, a salary and then we pay their tuition, so they're working on active research. And so I'll meet with them in the morning, we'll touch base on their research. Um, and then we also teach classes. Um, I teach a, a couple of different classes. So teaching is one part of it. And then my other day would be, take, most of my day is taken up with the research. Um, so I do a lot of um, computer modeling. Um, we spend a lot of time outside uh, collecting fish, uh, collecting data. 
So we'll be out in the field uh, on the boat or we'll be in the laboratory. And then, you know, we have the service component as well. So we'll be meeting with people that are concerned with the fishery, um, like some, some of the, the people watching the show might be avid fishermen for spotted sea trout or red drum, uh, southern flounder. These are important fish stocks in our region, and so I'll be talking with them. All right. Um, was there anything kind of specific that drove you to this field? Well, I've always had an interest in uh, science and math, particularly. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so that's always, and I've always loved to be outside. And this job is, I think, good for, it's best, I think, for people that enjoy being outside, uh, collecting information about nature, but also very interested in applying, you know, some sophisticated methods like, um, uh, either statistical methods or mathematical um, applications. So I think, um, so that's what drew me because it, it's a nice combination of those two. I'm not always inside, but I'm not always in the field every day. Yeah, I get that. Um, so kind of leading off the last question, are there any kind of distinct advantages you feel like you get working in this field? Right, so um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so I think there's really two main things for me and that the first is the quality of the work and that you enjoy what you're doing. I particularly enjoy doing research and uh, mentoring of students and also the service component. And I think that really leads into that second thing that I enjoy doing. And I think a lot of people in the sciences enjoy is feeling like they're making a difference in people's lives. And um, so the, the, the work that we do has a sort of a direct and immediate impact on um, the you know the economic health of our region, um, the people people's ability to catch fish as they would like, um, make sure they can take their kids to catch fish, and um, so those really those are the aspects that I particularly value. All right. Um, so, what other career paths do you kind of work closely with? Well, that's a good question. Um, I work a lot with um, people in what we call the physical sciences. So that would be um, uh, the oceanography, physical oceanography, geological oceanography, um, and chemical oceanography. So these are uh, branches of marine science. We're often interested in, even in the absence of fishing, how, the, how nature and um, the sort of the status of the ecosystem um, controls whether a fish stock is moving up, moving, mm -hmm. getting in greater abundance or less abundance. And then the other group that we work a lot with is the ocean engineering folks. They develop all the, the instrumentation. These are uh, people that are concerned with uh, electrical and mechanical engineering, and they develop all of our instrumentation so we can observe uh, the sort of the physical and chemical characteristics of the water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, so. If you're comfortable, can you describe kind of a starting level salary for your field? Sure. Um, I think at a master's level, you're looking somewhere between maybe 40 and 45. Uh, mm -hmm. For a bachelor's, um, which I think people, uh, your, your viewers would be interested in, you go to school for four years, you come out with a, a marine biology degree, I think you're probably looking between maybe 30 to 40K, depending on what you're, mm -hmm. what you're doing. Um, and then. PhD and um, and then more um, uh, and then you know more education. I think you know up to six figures. Oh, wow! Yeah. All right. Uh, so last question: um, Is there any kind of general advice you want to give people that are kind of on the edge, like sure. if they want to get into this field? Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that a lot of people, a lot of folks experience, and you might experience this in high school as well, is that the learning curve seems to be a little steep. It's, um, it's not everybody that's going to take calculus as a senior, for instance, or, um, uh, or geometry. I think that must be the one before calculus that you take. So yeah. it's a fairly steep learning curve, but um, if you can develop that skill set very early on, it'll take you very far. Um, so uh, so I, think, I, think that's probably, I think that's probably the best thing to say is that um, you really have to enjoy doing math and science to become a scientist yeah. because it can be pretty consuming. Yeah, yeah, I get that. All right, well, um, 
Do you have any final remarks you want to say? Oh, well, just that um, I guess I'd extend an invitation to you and to anybody that's watching. If they're interested in our, um, in our undergraduate programs at USM, um, as I mentioned, we have four different and very distinct programs. Um, if you have an interest in marine science, marine biology, or engineering, um, please uh, look us up on the web, and uh, we'd be happy to host you and show you what we're doing. All right. And Thank you so much for right. coming today. Oh, my pleasure. Nice to meet you. Nice Thank to meet you very you. much.